All right, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is going to be controlling a servo drive, but or, or a servo access in Studio 5000, what I like to consider the order of operation. So uh, briefly, we can go down and look at just the start of it. Um, I have a start push button. I have a start uh, push button from a, an HMI, which is an ignition HMI that I have tied to this. Um, the start, uh, basically this first rung is, is basically, well, the premise of all of this is a state machine so the current state it will be thrown into a zero if this is actually the start uh, start is not pressed either your physical axis happens the physical axis happens and then a fault happens um, then you will come in here and you have like you if you have a, a module fault or something like that and then you come down here to the very first state which is right here the current state that it's in and you can tell the current state if coming in here is set to basically equal if the master state right here is is set to zero then it's going to come in here and turn off the servo why do i turn off the servo first is because if any given time the let's just say for instance you have a process upset or let's just say the system was stopped or or maybe even misprogrammed then what what's going to happen is if you don't have if you don't issue a uh, motion access off first you can't guarantee that your your servo is stopped I and mean, if you try to start it back again or if you try to cut it on again then you're going to have an instruction fault so what I like to do is actually turn my servo off to begin with especially it's, it's really really good for recovery so again especially if you have any kind of issues like that now once the start but uh, basically the start is on and the uh, start light is on this is that's basically what I'm using as my uh, enable if you would so um, these two come in and, and look basically looks down and says okay well is the ball screw in this case the ball screw is the servo is it in shutdown status is it in physical status uh, like axis fault if it's in any kind of the, one of those you can have a motion shutdown reset or a motion axis fault reset and again those can be done basically with the HMI or with the standard push button which is a fault reset or an HMI reset which is again I used a ignition um, although if neither one of those are present and the fault is uh, ball screw has no faults then it will automatically go and push uh, two into the current state the current state's current state when it is equal to two will come in here and say the ball screw action status <clears throat> which we have verified we have already cut it off when that action status is off basically we want to turn it on as soon as it turns on it's going to wait for the servo to come on for or basically turn on basically two seconds once the servo uh two seconds is on, i just put this in there as like a buffer if you would you don't necessarily need this but once it's on and it has the access status it's come over here <clears throat> and you can see this right here is done the motion access direct or the the motion uh servo on is is actually done the instruction is done then it's going to push a three into the current state when it pushes a three into the current state and this equal to the current state is equal to three it's going to then home the servo and once the servo home is complete it will push a four into the current state once in the current state that the current state is equal to four in this atmosphere then what it will happen is the MAM which it, you'll basically command it to go up and down so I'm going to command it to go to a basically a position of 200 that's from the actual homed zero so it's going to actually go up 200 millimeters once that's complete it's going to hold that and then come out here for five and then push a five in there once the current state is equal to five it's going to come over here and then it's going to do another MAM and tell the servo to go to position 10. At this point in time, it will then come over here and hold. It will do a motion axis stop. And then it will sit here and repeat itself. 
Once the motion active stop is done, pushes the seven into there, and once the seven is equal to uh, current state seven is equal to the seven, it's going to come over here and do a virtual axis jog. We did a uh, camming right here. Realistically, <clears throat> I'm not doing the camming. I'm not doing any of that. So what's going to happen is what I've been doing is coming over here, letting it run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So instead of shutting it off, what I'll do is right here it is instead of going to six right here, you see, I'm not pushing a six in here. I was pushing a six when I was wanting to do, when I was actually allowing it to go to a motion axis cam and do a jog and all that stuff. And in this focus though, I want it to just run up and down okay so I'm going to position 5 and, and the, the state of 5 once the state of 5 is equal to that it's going to come over here to, to do a position of 10 and once it's obtained the position of 10 it will then the PC bit will the process complete bit will come on and then it will hold it for two seconds and then go to back to position 4 which is going to fluctuate back and forth to these and go from 10 to 200 until it's told to stop. Now for that, for you just to see that mechanism work, I'm going to start it and you will actually see right here that we are in a state of three right now. So it's homing. As soon as this process complete comes in, and the servo is homed so the servo is currently homing right now and as soon as that is that right now it's in progress right so that that's what the ip bit means that's right so if you don't know what the ip bit means it means in progress the pc bit is process complete so once it is done and it is fully done you know again this what, it, what it's doing is actually running down all the way to a proc switch um, <clears throat> so anyway once that's done it's going to come into a position of four you can see it's running to 20 or 200 position of 200 right now it's in progress as soon as that PC bit comes in it's going to hold for two seconds then it's going to come back and run to position 10 it's an in progress and then a PC bit will come in and then right here come complete and the only reason I'm putting holds in here is so that you can actually see it. Um, otherwise it's very fast and you wouldn't be able to see it. So right now we're just fluctuating back and forth between the two states, right? Which is four and five. So we're, we're essentially telling the servo, the ball screw to go up to position 200 to a 200 millimeters and then go down to, to a position of 10 millimeters. And the speed we're telling it to is basically 20. So we're not telling it to do real fast. Um, again, this is just a simple example of basically, a, you know, doing sit motion and doing a ball screw. And actually one of the instruments that I, I use to show how to actually calculate uh, the ball screw and actually calculate the, the uh, millimeters per the pitch and everything like that. Originally I did it for that, but when it comes down to it, I want to actually show the proper order of operation. I and and this is my take on it because at any, any given time, no matter what state it's in, somebody could come up here and hit a stop button, right? So it's in the middle of a process, and you can hit a stop button, and it's going to stop. It's going to push a zero in here. So when it stopped, <clears throat> and we can look at the position of the servo. So if you want to actually look at the position of the ball screw, we'll come in here and monitor that state and we can look at the position and we're looking for actual position, which is generally up top, but let's see, <clears throat> looking for actual position. Here we go. Actual velocity, actual position, a start position, actual position right here. Right now it's at 43 millimeters. So if I if somehow I somebody hit a stop button and I did not want to pick up where it left off, I want it to come down here and home and to start the process over, like say adequately, right? So say for instance, um, 
I had the system where it needed to properly come down. You can see that now it's homing. <clears throat> and now it's going to a position of 200. Okay, so at that point it homed pretty quick. And now it's going to a position of 200. And now it's going to go down to a position of 10. And then it will go down to a position, back to a position of 200. And then it will go back to a position of 10. So it will fluctuate back and forth. But the state, the, the whole premise behind this is to have an adequate recovery. Now, am I saying that like you need to have an adequate recovery every single time? Not necessarily, but if you do have a process upset, this, this is a good method to do so, right? Or if you needed the, the machine to start back and, to, and do a certain order of certain, a certain order of that machine that is, is this mandatory, right? So if it had to start back from the sequence of, if, you know, like starting, right? So if somebody hit the stop button or had a process upset or, or say it was fin it wasn't quite finished making the part, then you you know you could actually have it auto reject the part and then start all over, or you know for the sake of that you can actually home it and then have the the, the system start back over. Um, I've had this again. I've successfully put this type stuff in in many different atmospheres where say for instance I wanted to have a servo two servos run to a set position and then that way I could check them and check check the calibration of them check them you know how the distance that they were they were actually operating off of to make sure that basically the the system was going to work as quarter uh, as it should so basically like a maintenance check position if you would um, I've put it, I've implemented this for that and it's been very successful. It has not had any process upsets. It's actually been in service for probably 12 years. And again, when it comes down to it, it's using this order of operation. Now this order of operation can actually change based upon, again, your machine. But when it comes down to it, the main premise behind it is you want to check to make sure you don't have any faults. You want to cut the servo off. Anytime you stop a servo, or you want to make sure you have a full recovery you want to make sure it's, you cut it off you want to make sure it doesn't have any faults if it doesn't have any faults and you can cut it on that's a very quick process if again everything is healthy and another thing too i'm also monitoring my group and what you might be asking yourself is what group are you monitoring the motion group Right? So the motion group is, is making sure it's synced before it can do any motion whatsoever. So what I want to do, at least with this video, is to break down some of the, the methodology of why I'm doing what I'm doing when I'm programming stuff like this. Now, I have have much more in-depth programs where I show where I've done you know servo controls and, and you can see a lot more to this. This is a very simple one. Um, obviously for the benefit of actually having a better understanding and to be able to pass the information on to you. Um, so that way you get an understanding of it. So with that said, you know, hopefully you learned a lot from this and you learned a lot from the, the basic premise and the operation of, of why I'm doing what I'm doing for that specific reason, mainly for a, a solid recovery. You want to make sure your system can recover no matter what. And again, that, that rolls down to somebody hitting the stop button. And if they hit a stop button right now, the servo again, I don't know, I just happen to be stopping it in the position of 40. Um, but you can see, and it come back here, it will recover, comes down here, it goes homes real quick. And then as soon as it gets done homing, it will start the process of then running back and forth. So again when it comes down to it i mean it's just a matter of having the system recover properly without you having to worry about it you want a system that you when you, when you program something you want it to be reliable and you want it to make sure that it, it can do its task every single time successfully and then obviously you don't want to have to come back and play with it or maintenance it all the time you know when you write code you de like the one thing if anything you're going to have to work on is going to be the servo like if the servo or the coupling or the gearbox or something like that you don't want to have to worry about the code right you don't have to worry about the plc code behind it you want to have to worry about the physical attributes because those are the things that are going to go out 
not your PLC code, not your, your programming code. If your programming code is a problem, there's things you can do to implement to fix that, to make sure you have a good recovery, make sure you have a good uh, process control of that nature, right? So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video. We'll see you guys on the next one.